Hey everyone, it's Dylan from the Black Forest Wood Company and this week we're going to be showing you our process of creating one of the most amazing furniture packages we've ever done. We've got a bath stone walnut fireplace feature. First time we've ever done something like this, so I hope you guys enjoy seeing this process. So this client happens to have very good taste in that they've selected a gorgeous slab of bath stone walnut. Bastone walnut is probably my personal favorite species and a little bit of information on it some of you may not realize. Bastone walnut is a naturally occurring hybrid species between Clara walnut and English walnut. So those trees can cross pollinate and it's quite a rare thing to take place. In the event that that cross pollination happens is when you'll get these resulting bastone walnut trees. So it's highly prized because of the extra dramatic grains and figuring you get. So after we've got the piece cut down to its rough size, we can get it on our Avid CNC machine to begin the initial flattening. When we're flattening our slabs for a pour, we usually do what we call like a rough flat flattening where we're only taking off the majority of the high spots and the goal with this is to allow the slab to sit flat in the mold but not to fully take it down to its final thickness. Then we can go ahead and begin debarking the edges and our goal here is to remove all of the debris off the edges so that we can get a proper bond. You need to take off more than just the bark so that's why we use a wire wheel in addition to peeling off the bark because it will remove that thin little layer of cambium which can still impact the strength of your bond. So now what you can see Jack doing right here is a rough cut for our miter. He's not actually putting on the 45 degree miter for this piece so it can wrap around the wall. He's just making a rough cut so that we generally know where this piece is gonna end up. And I'll explain a little bit about what this piece is going to be. Uh, you saw it at the beginning, but it's gonna wrap around uh, a facade on the front of this fireplace. And the design has changed many times throughout this. Originally, the fireplace was gonna be inside our piece of wood and we we're gonna have to cut a hole out but we've ended up changing it so that the fireplace feature which we're making is off to the left and the fireplace itself is off to the right. Once we've got all of the pieces cleaned up and debarked, it's time to get them in the mold and prepare for the pour. So these slabs are still in their rough state, so they don't have their finish on yet, but you can already see some of the amazing grain and color that's gonna be evident in these slabs. And something a little bit different for you guys that you might enjoy is we're finally not doing a base layer pour. We have had many, many pours back to back that have been base layers where we do the solid pour on the bottom and the clear layer over top. But this pour is gonna get a tinted black resin all the way through. Of course, we're gonna be using our Black Forest Deep Resin for this pour. It is our own proprietary brand. Obviously, we don't blend the resin here in house, but we've worked with a high-end manufacturer in the United States to come up with a custom formulation specifically designed for this application. So we've designed this resin to obviously be able to pour thick and have a low exothermic reaction, but we've also designed it to be slightly elastic while still drying hard. And what that elasticity does is it allows your wood to expand and contract without letting go uh, of the edge that's bonded to the resin. So some resin manufacturers will overlook this and they will just focus on a hard drying product, but that's not the optimum kind of product that you wanna use in this application. As you can see here, the boys are pouring this, the full two and a half inches thick in a single pour, and then this will sit in the mold for one week to cure up before we can pop it out. And now that we've got the piece cured, it's back onto the Avid CNC machine. We remove all of the excess resin off the surface. That's one question that we get often as well, is do we leave epoxy on the surface? Uh, and the answer is no. We wanna take everything off to let that wood breathe, and then we apply a different coating afterwards. So here you can see Randy using a Merca sander to get everything pre-sanded before we do our miter cut. And he's also working on some of the small fine detail works to fill in all the voids and imperfections. Then what you're seeing is an additional block that's just gonna make this piece look a little bit more continuous. It wasn't even specced as part of the build, but once we started looking at the drawings, we noticed there was a small section at the top of the fireplace where it would just look cleaner if we could extend the resin up to the top. So that's what that filler block is for, and you'll see that later. Now comes the most stressful part of this whole build, which is the 13 or 14 foot miter cut we have to perform on this live edge slab. And if you guys have any experience working with slabs, you'll know that they move and John is going to explain what he had to deal with. Currently Leshik and I are working on 45ing a waterfall that wraps on the corner of a fireplace. She's a monster. We have tons of jigs made. It's going to be an all-day process. It's not something we can accomplish in multiple days because it's live wood. We have to 45 it, glue it up in the same day and then the following days we'll sand and finish it. Excited to see this guy up. It's going to be really cool. After we've got that giant miter cut, we've got to work fast so that this wood doesn't want to warp. 
So we're using the Festool Domino just to help us with the alignment on this joint and give a little bit of strength. Um, you know, some people have corrected me in the comments on that before saying that the dominoes don't add strength, which is 100% correct when you're just doing edge joints. Uh, but I don't actually know if that's true for a miter like this because I know a miter joint is slightly weaker than an edge joint. Uh, so maybe someone smarter than me can give some insight in the comments on if you actually get additional strength when using the dominoes on a 45 like this. Uh, it may be something we'll have to do a video for and test. After waiting for 24 hours in the clamps, we can get the piece popped off, we clean the glue off, and then it's off to Jekko for a sprayed acrylic urethane finish. The acrylic urethane is going to be our go-to for this application because this is the kind of piece that is just going to beg people to touch it. It's sitting up there on the wall looking beautiful and in our experience something like this you're just drawn to want to put your fingers on it. So instead of doing an oil based finish which could show more of the smudges and imperfections caused by all the repeated touching, we're opting for the sprayed acrylic urethane because it will be very easy to clean and looking, keep looking brand new. Finished, we do our final inspection for quality control. We can get it wrapped up in our white foam, packed into the crate. And you'll notice that this crate looks like it has more than just the fireplace piece in it. That's because this is one of the largest furniture packages we've ever created. So they got this fireplace piece, but then they also ordered a whole entire custom kitchen with a resin feature even more amazing than this fireplace piece. So if you guys want to see that, you're going to have to subscribe and stick around till next week because that's going to be next week's video and then it's down to our client's home on Lake Tahoe. So this is one of the most incredible properties that we have ever had the pleasure of going to, and I will let the property do the speaking for itself. Uh, it's just a huge pleasure whenever we get to go somewhere like this. Well, hello everyone. We are here at our client's gorgeous home near Lake Tahoe. Uh, guest home, I should correct myself. We're gonna be completing our installation of the giant Bastone Walnut Bar Top and the giant Bastone Walnut Fireplace Cover. Um, haven't really done a fireplace cover like this before. And let's head on inside and I'll give you guys a quick little tour of the place right now and we'll show you what we're putting in. This is where our fireplace piece is going. So we'll put the rendering on screen for that right now as well. It's yeah, got kind of this angled top on it, so we had to make sure everything was cut and would fit perfectly, but pretty excited for this. It's be a very cool install. Yeah, how did you guys find out about us initially? Was it Debbie? I did. Or no, you did, man. I just was searching on the internet, and there was this guy who pitched me on it originally, and then he got, it was the weirdest thing. He goes, I want a, a stay in your house. What? And, uh, he said, no, I want the new house. And I'm like, no, bye. And then I found you guys. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't you guys part of our deal. Than him anyway. Oh, and he was saying he's suing everybody using, for using the river table name. Because he invented oh, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got it. That's him. He's, he's a goofy guy. Yeah. There's half a shot. So, like John mentioned earlier, we've got like half of our shop loaded into a box here. Uh, so that's all of our tools, and then in this crate over here, we've got, um, there's our fireplace piece that I was talking about. So that's this L-shaped piece right here that you're seeing. Uh, this is the door that goes on the, the bar. There's, there's like a, a hinge door that goes on the end. And then the bar piece itself, can't really see right now, but this is an end of it here, and that's another end of it over there. So we're just getting everything set up inside the house right now. Um, you guys heard a little bit of the funny story from our client about that's, that's pretty entertaining, but 
It is what it is. So with this story, our client told us we've censored the name uh, because as you've heard, this guy has been known to sue people and we don't want to get involved in that. Um, but you guys can use your imagination and I'm sure you can probably figure it out. It's not like we're just a flat panel. We put PLW it's down. It's sitting on the bottom. And I, we got to put a spacer here. That I mean, PL's is strong. Italian piece this fireplace. Do the fireplace first yeah. thing? Okay. Four people, so then you can run away. Do the table. Do the table okay. while we're working on this first. Okay, that makes sense. Still on? Good. Make sure it's still there. <laughs> Alright. Did I just take off the side of this crate? I think we, we ought to. Yeah. yeah. Did anyone have any nightmares last night about this job? Or? I actually slept good. I, Every I other night for the last month it. I've had nightmares. <laughs> it's like the first job I've had like actual say over every pump component. Looks like I've got it more passive through there, but I can't see So that side should go in first. Yeah. Okay. Anybody want some gloves? Uh, sure, um, I'll take a pair of okay. some gloves. <laughs> You guys are okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do that. Yeah, we'll hold it there. You got yeah. it. Yeah. We're unloading. Yeah, we might as well measure because if we cut anything, we're cutting off the bottom. Yes. So that would be right this to this. This is the angle. Yeah. So this yeah. is your side. Yeah. So we want to be 147 and a quarter from the bottom here. So we're 147 and three quarter, which is perfect, right? We've got a half an inch width, so we don't have to cut anything. Yeah. Right, we'll probably float that up off the ground. Just Now, about two or three years ago, this client also ordered a custom dining room table for us. So a service we offer, if you end up ordering $160,000 uh, worth of furniture in a large package, we'll come down and install it, and we'll also refinish your dining table for free. That's just how nice we are. Um, but no, b being that we were there, it just made sense to, to tune up this dining table for our client. Uh, it, it didn't need it, you know, it still looked great, but what I did is a light sand and a recoat with our ceramic. Took me a couple hours and we had the dining table looking brand new. And something extra special, which we didn't film for obvious reasons, is we got invited for dinner after. And believe it or not, it's the first time we've ever got to have dinner on one of our pieces that we've made for a client. So a huge, huge pleasure to get to experience that. And they were incredibly generous with the amazing food they made, the incredible wine they opened, and just huge thank you to our clients for being so awesome. Okay, so about two or three years ago, this client also ordered uh, a dining table from us. So it's Bastone Walnut. It's got this really cool steel base on there, uh, and we did an oil finish on this table, so it's ready for some maintenance, uh, which this actually brings up a good point because I talk about uh, in previous videos why some people pick urethane and why some people pick oil. So this table gets used a lot, and you'll see it doesn't look brand new anymore by any means, but it still looks pretty darn good. So we're gonna sand it with 2000 grit, put a new coat of oil on, and it should look pretty much brand new. It still looks beautiful. We get a lot of compliments. I mean, a lot of compliments. Now the person who comes by needs to hear it doesn't say something. I came in here expecting needing to completely re-oil the piece, uh, but it's held up quite well. Um, and you can see, there's still lots of oil, it looks really, really rich. So we're gonna be applying the ceramic coating to the surface of this to increase the durability of the piece. So that's what I'm doing here now. I'll start down at this end of the table. And again, with our ceramic coating, it's best to work in sections. So I'm just gonna work on this small section down here at this end of the table. And work my way across with the coating. You can see it really bumping up the gloss and the shine on this piece here.
ceramic coating, it's quite easy in terms of maintenance. Uh, this table was finished with an oil-based finish and we did coat it off with the ceramic coating. So it had some slight areas of damage and all that it took was a 2000 grit sanding, two coats of ceramic, and it had that piece essentially looking brand new. So that same process can be applied for you guys if you wanna restore the look of your pieces. And I do have something exciting to mention about a new ceramic product, which is gonna make the application process even easier than it ever has been. These are sprayable graphene coatings that we have come up with, uh, partnering with our manufacturer. Let me just show you how easy these are to use. It's the marine base coat, and we've got a marine top coat. They're incredibly hydrophobic. We've completely eliminated the need for the applicator blocks and the applicator pads. You simply spray it on your surface and you wipe it in and immediately you can see the increase in the contrast and the color that's there. It's incredible. And while I was finishing up in the house on the dining table, Brad kept working on prepping the wall to put our fireplace piece on. So we're just installing some plywood here with PL400 so we can build up the thickness where the tile doesn't extend. And then we're gonna apply more PL400 to the outside of those pieces of plywood. And we're just gonna stand this piece up, squish it into place, throw a couple clamps on, and that PL100 should hold forever. Now, we always try to do as many of the cuts into a piece as we can in our shop as opposed to on the field. So if any accidental damage happens, we can fix it. However, with the location of this plug, we just didn't feel comfortable doing it in our shop because we weren't 100% sure how our fireplace piece was gonna sit. So we opted to create a jig in our shop, ship that jig down, route the hole on site, and then finish it right on site. And fortunately, it all went well and it looked awesome. Oh, right there, is it? You can leave the foam right there. Okay, okay. So now we can go up. Okay. You can never imagine what this stuff is going to look like when it's installed and you're just building it in the shop. Yeah. It, you know, and you work on it for hours and hours and it just becomes sometimes this inanimate piece and then you install it like this and it's like holy crow. <laughs> Sorry, it was a story. It was just limited time. I was sure me. Jeez. Let's install this thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, pull it out far enough, I guess hopefully we don't damage the floor. Just so we can clean? You clean, can clean? Need a PL. Big fat bead of PL. Now PL works best. You squish against it, pull it out, let it set for 30 seconds, and then push it back against it. Okay. Now we can go with big fat blobs. Yeah, go only on the... Okay, just walk it. Um, applying, scientifically applying, strategically applying, not scientifically, strategically applying uh, big gobs of PL400. Is gob a scientific term? Yeah, so we kind of want to go back until we get about an inch away and then we'll go in on a 45. There we go. Okay. And then, yeah. Is that okay? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's in. Can we get in there? Yeah. And I see this place looks so rich. Like it already, it already did. Yeah, yeah, like it's just. Yeah, it's just a whole nother level. It's, it's so, like, it's nuts. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, and then once that whole thing is set up. Let me see how she fits. Oh, you have. This is, uh, I'm really happy with this. Yeah, check that out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so clamps, we'll take those off in the, in the morning tomorrow. Yeah, it's yeah. a good day though. That was a big Very full day, day, eh, John? Yeah, Very we got exactly good. where we needed to yeah, be. Exactly. Yeah, no less wouldn't have been any better. Or, yeah. yeah. I was expecting beer till 8 o'clock tonight, so yeah. 6 is pretty good. Six I don't know what good. we would have done if John wasn't here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We <laughs> kind of needed him, but yeah, we got yeah. Crying. Um, yeah. Part of John's a machine. Is yeah. in. John is a machine. <laughs> El Machina. <laughs> El Johnny Machina. 
This is also Bath Stone Walnut. It's our fireplace uh, cover and we did, this is the longest 45 that we've ever done on a live edge slab. Uh, hats off to the boys again for getting this perfect and we also routed out integration so we can get the plug fitting perfectly and then up at the top Brad put his little filler block and it goes all the way to the ceiling. Again, thank you to absolutely everybody who was involved in this project. It was such a pleasure for us and we cannot wait to hopefully do more work for these clients and thank you to all of you for choosing to watch our videos. We'll see you next week. Do we want to give a shout out to Debbie? Yes. <laughs> And Debbie from Moxie Design especially, she is the one with sort of the vision and that allowed this whole place to come together. She selected the furniture. We were dealing with her for this. Um, and she, she was just great to work with.